Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Pro Tips. Today we're going to focus on UVW unwrapping and I'm going to show a few of my favorite tools and tricks. Now the following unwrapping tips are assuming we're modeling and unwrapping for textures and materials we've already created. There are other things to consider when unwrapping for texture baking, but that will be discussed in another video. So here's an example from a building exercise I do in my class. And I've stripped the UVs down and I've wiped out the material assignments. So basically during today's video, we're going to recreate the UV information for this building. Now the first thing that we need to set up are material IDs and our multi sub object material. So the material that I'm using for this building is a multi sub object material and it consists of a bunch of sub materials. So we have brick, details, glass, collision, lights, etc. Now if you were going to do this from scratch, you would just select a material ball, change it from standard and choose multi sub object. And here's where you would set your number of materials. So I usually just kind of estimate how many materials I'm going to need and either raise or lower it by the end. So we'll say six and we can select the first one. We can call this brick and you would go down to maps, load the texture, probably uh, just load your diffuse or whatever you need to preview your unwrap at this point. And when you load that, I'll do one here as an example. So we load a brick material. We want to go to parent and make sure show map and viewport is turned on so that when you apply this to an object, that it actually shows up. Now we'll see right away, we have one face that's showing brick, but the other faces have different material IDs assigned and they're showing it black because we assigned the master material here. Now this might seem like a problem, but it's actually gives us a um, good advantage when you're dealing with a complex scene. That way you can keep all your assignments consistent. One of the problems I've had in the past when I don't use a multi sub object material, you might have like 12 materials it just balls floating around and, and you're applying them all to the same building, but depending on how you import it into a game engine, it might, the material IDs might lose position. So you can avoid that by having one master material where the IDs are always consistent for the, the sub materials. So uh, once you have one of these, you can copy it down and make sure to use copy. Uh, instance is a kind of clone, so that would never let you differentiate it from the uh, source. So if we choose copy, then down here we can you know, swap out different textures or just change flat colors. For things like glass, a lot of times I'll just use a flat color because I'll be defining that those uh, settings in the actual game engine anyway. So now that we have another material here, if we were to convert this object to edit poly, you can select faces and scroll down over here until you see your material IDs. So the first material that's showing up correct is set to one. This one's set to five. So if we wanted to change that to our new blue material, we can say two and hit enter and that material ID will show up. So I'll stick with my other multi sub object material since it's set up for this and just start assigning these. Now there's some additional tricks that make assigning a little quicker. For instance, on the, the windows here, these windows are just going to be solid glass. So I'm going to select them, but the window frames are going to be assigned to my details material. So on if we look at the details material, there's a little uh, strip that's going to be kind of an aluminum window frame that I want on all surrounding all the windows. So I can select these faces and then use my grow selection twice. Now I have the whole window frame unit selected and I can change my ID once here to two. So I have everything assigned to the details material right now. And then I can shrink material twice and assign my glass to three. So um, just kind of getting used to using grow and shrink to better select the correct materials and assign things can save you a lot of time. So on the top here, I'm going to do a similar thing, but these windows and their frames are going to be 
all assigned to material ID 2 because on the details material I also have a window frame piece of geometry that I have baked into the texture. So we'll assign these and do grow selection twice. And it looks like I had a little bit of spillover on my selection, so that's why I, it's good to double check. And I'm going to set these to two. So that ID is correct. And then there's some trim geometry up here. Um, I believe I want this to do a loop selection. So pretty much from this point on up, I want that to all be my details. Uh, trim material, so I'm going to select that loop and then I'll deselect the bottom part. And this would allow me to do a ring selection. So Alt R goes perpendicular of that edge edge uh, loop. And then if you hold Control and press Polygon, you'll get that whole selection. So now I assign everything to two. And I have access to my trim textures. I had already had one of those unwrapped. So on the top, you see the textures are ready to go there. Now, let's go into actually add our unwrap UVW. One thing to keep in mind, <clears throat> you can unwrap just a specific selection. And I'll show you an example uh, why we would do that. But <clears throat> when, you're, when you wanna have access to everything, I wanna be able to select any face and change its UVs here. You want to make sure you go into unwrap without any selection. Otherwise, you can only change the UVs of that selection. So I've seen a lot of people uh, think that you have to select a face, add an unwrap, and just keep stacking them on top of them themselves in the modifier stack. And that's just kind of an annoying workflow. Um, so I just make my UV changes and I just keep, keep collapsing it down. So let's add an unwrap UVW and open this up. Go over a few tricks. Now, if we go to face mode here, we can select faces manually. But a cool thing, if you already have your material IDs set up, like I do over here, we can select faces just by material ID. So I can change this to one and select. And just like that, we have all of our bricks selected. Looks like my ID got messed up on this side, but that's all right. So I'm going to deselect these sides here and I want to just unwrap this kind of cylindrical piece here and for that we would actually want to use cylindrical map so I'll add the cylindrical map and it, it will give you kind of a preview of the orientation of the cylinder that it's going to use to unwrap if it doesn't match the orientation that your your cylinder of geometry is then you can change it with XYZ and also look at the UVs as you change this. Basically, we're looking for the one that is kind of in a straight straight line like we have here. And if you also hit fit, it'll, it'll tighten up around your selection and get closer. When I initially add, added this, I had some additional geo over here. So uh, it was really stretched and it gave me a visual cue that I needed to deselect some faces. So with cylindrical map, here we can't edit this until we turn this back off so as soon as you like what you see here then uncheck cylindrical map and i'm going to use my free form mode to move this around and sometimes it does this where it kind of broke this up at a one end and puts it on the other side here we can manually slide this over and just kind of get it lined up pretty close and then I'm gonna go into the vertex mode here. So I have this selection here and I can stitch it back together just by going to tools, weld selected. And you'll see the green seam line goes away and shows up white. The green seam just represents the edge of the UV border. Um, so in the middle of the UV shell, basically we don't wanna see those green seams. Now that we have this UV island, you can select whole UV islands by turning on element. And we can just click a single click now. And let's go over, over to checker pattern on the top right and just choose checker pattern. 
and scale this up. Basically, we're looking for these UVs to become square. That means they're an even texel density without any distortion. And it looks like we need to scale this non-uniformly on the vertical axis until we get a little more, or actually we want to scale it down a little bit until we get that nice square UV. So that's better. And I can turn on my um, brick texture and double check it. I also want to make sure the scale is kind of correct. And that, that looks about right. Now another good tool is unfold mapping. So for this case, I'm going to right click and just convert to edit poly, um, or you can right click and collapse too. Notice my UVs are still there and I'm back to edit poly. Now, a lot of people think that you need to do all your modeling first and then you unwrap and then that's it. It's a finished product, but the workflow is not supposed to be linear like that. You get a lot better results if you keep it organic because you might, you might decide you want to add geometry or change something based on how the, the unwrap process is going. You might need more edge loops or less edge loops or splitting the faces in different areas. So for these flat trims, a lot of times you can select the face loop. And I did that just by holding shift and selecting an adjacent face. And this is a case where it's easier to select it in the regular view and then add an unwrap to it. Go to open and I'll select the entire face. So even though it was selected when you unwrap, you still need to select that in the viewport. But now we can't select anything else except what we went into the unwrap with. And here I can go to mapping, unfold mapping, keep the defaults and say OK. And what that gave us is all the trim unwrapped in a perfect line here. And if I hold shift and scale it up, shift constrains the proportions in your UVs um, because the unfold mapping will actually keep the proportions intact pretty well. And now I can just go and move this along until we see it on the, the correct trim detail. And might need to adjust the scale. All right, so I'll, I'll try that. And notice if we jump to checker pattern, very little distortion there with using unfold. Now unfold doesn't always work, so I usually try it at first. And if it doesn't work, then I'll do something more manually. So I had to collapse my UV and go back in with no selection. This trick is really handy, especially for details that are repetitive. So I'm going to unwrap one window, and then we go to edit, copy. So we copied that UV, and then we'll paste it on all the other windows. So I select these, and then we'll go to edit, paste. And because the geometry and vertex count is pretty much the same on those windows, they should paste in there without an issue. Okay, so that, that worked well. Now we can use this and do the same thing for all the window seals. Now this is where it's a real time saver because trying to unwrap all these trims would just be a pain in the, pain in the butt. So I selected one of these here and did a quick planar map. Remember, if you just do a, a quick planar map to a surface, it's just going to give you that from the best planar angle and it'll be a really nice clean UV of that polygon. If all you had in the world was quick planar map, you could still make some decent UVs. If you had to get, if you're stranded on an island with one UV tool, I'd probably choose quick planar map. But I don't think I'd want to be unwrapping on an island. Okay, so let's move this guy over here. 
And these are the types of details that I kind of anticipate when I'm laying out my materials. I know that I'm going to have a ton of window seals, so I have a little area allotted for that. So we have that map there. I'm going to copy the UVs. And then we can get all the other window seals really easily by taking this selection. And we do a grow twice. And then alt select over the window and deselect the ones we already mapped there. So now we have the window seals all around and we can edit paste. And those UVs should be good. Let's just do an export and test out some of the things we've changed so far. So we have the cylindrical map of the brick on the front. These windows haven't been adjusted, but the material IDs are already working. Here's the windows we just did. And our trim textures, nice and clean, not much distortion there. Uh, one thing we can see, some of these windows did rotate differently when they got pasted. So it's a little wacky here. The one on the top looks correct, where the one on the bottom looks a little strange. Um, so to fix those, we would just go select the ones that are rotated incorrectly and adjust them. But already we're starting to get some decent results. So now let's clean up some of the brickwork here. So we would, we don't have to add another unwrap since we didn't do a specific mask. I can just go right in here and select these. So this is just a pretty simple, we just want a nice quick planar map for that. So I'll unwrap that. But I can still line it up with everything else. So this is our cylindrical map that we started with. I can take this piece and go over here. And if we go to vertex mode, we can select the sides. And I can see that this these verts correspond with this spot because they light up blue when I select them. If I do the same thing here, these will light up blue where they're supposed to stitch together. So that way we can select this UV shell and kind of scale it up into place and we know how large we need to make it. So the bricks will be seamless there. And we can just select this as well. Now sometimes well, weld selection doesn't work like that case. So you have some other stitch options that'll work stitch to average, um, just average those out and stitch in between them. So that was a good, uh, good candidate for that. But you can also try these other stitch options when either the weld or stitch to average is not working. So what we have there now is a seamless UV transition from our cylindrical UVs to the quick planar map stitched together. And you can go around and do the rest of the UVs in the same way. All right, here are a couple shots with the complete building unwrapped. Now I know UV unwrapping can be a difficult beast to tame, so I hope some of these tips help you guys in the future. Bye. Thanks everybody.